So what is it supposed to do? My impression was it was supposed to do two things. Number one, it's supposed to amplify Wi-Fi signals. So if I'm in an RV park and the Wi-Fi signal is not really good, this device is supposed to pick up that weak signal, make it nice and strong, and so you have a good internet connection. That was one of the problems I had because I need high-speed internet. I need to be able to do Zoom meetings, business calls with multiple people, and I can't have a laggy connection. Let's go spy on Doug. This is his office. So when we are on the road, Doug is still working. He has two computers. One for the, the video and one for his work. And uh, that's his office. Working all the time. During the day, around four or five, we head out and adventure. Now I'll talk to you later about how that amplifier and the idea of high speed kind of don't go together. I learned this after the fact and I'll explain to you why and how. And then the other aspect of this device, which worked pretty much perfectly, is the 4G service. The 4G service, you can either use your AT&T plan or Verizon, or you can use WineGuard has their own plan. You can just put it on your device, turn it on, go on, plug in a couple numbers, and you have internet service through them, through 4G. Or what we did was we used our AT&T plan. Some recommendations in terms of if you're going to use your own plan. As much as it seems like this is a major device, and if you look at their website, they say they work with AT&T and Verizon. When you call AT&T, can't speak to Verizon, when you call AT&T, they have no idea what you're talking about. And the more you try to explain to them, the more confused they get. Here is my tip for you on the way to do this. You get the device. You actually take the SIM card out of the device. You go to the store and you say, this is the SIM card for a data device. Doesn't matter. You know, they may consider it a hotspot. They may consider it the same as like a tablet. Doesn't matter. You're just buying a data plan for this card. But you need to bring the card because two things. Number one, they all use different verbiage for the size of cards. So it's not a universal kind of thing. So unless you're there and you say, here, this is the card, and somebody in the AT&T store goes, oh, I know that, that's this, this size card. It gets very confusing. Trust me, go to the store with the card, say, I want to add this device. We found it to be significantly less expensive to add it via AT&T than use wine guards, but um, it's not the same for everybody. That was just our, our experience. Let's go climb up on the RV. We'll do the install. As I'm showing you how to install it, I'll let you know what some of those specific problems I had with the device and some of the things which really worked fabulously. While I do my best Spider-Man here, would you throw me a like for this video? It's really important to the channel. Now let's get on with uh, installing this thing. Okay, let's start with the most scary part of this install. This is a brand new trailer which came with stickers all over saying pre-wired for WineGuard. So I thought this would be really kind of easy right up till I got to this point where I found the location where the wires were. What a giant pain in the neck it was to dig through all this sealant. Obviously, I know you got to have the sealant on this stuff, but it was like Fort Knox that I had to dig through to get to this metal plate, which when you remove the metal plate, you find the roof the roofing materials there. So you gotta cut a hole in the roofing material, which is sketchy by itself, and then stick your finger in there and dig out the wire, which worked perfectly. The cover that came with the wine guard kit fit perfectly. The wire was a little shorter than I would have liked, but nonetheless, it all worked just fine. 
Now you'll see right in front of me there, that is not the WineGuard T2. That is a WineGuard 360, which came pre-installed on my trailer, and it's an electronic antenna for TV and radio. While you watch me glue the hell out of this cap, I want to share with you my experience with this system because there's a dirty little secret that they don't tell you on their site and that I didn't see in anybody else's review of this. But on the Wi-Fi side of things, because there are in essence four antennas in there and each one amplifies the signal, which works fabulously, it also completely kills any speed that the system had. I was stunned, couldn't believe it. I hooked the thing up, hooked up directly to my house. I got one speed, then ran the same connection through the new WineGuard system, and it was less than half the speed. It's not what I thought I was getting. So I called WineGuard, and I spoke to the bottom of the net, bottom of the rung guy, the next guy up to the senior technical guy, and they were all like, oh, well, of course, it's an amplified signal, so you're only losing 60% of your speed? That seems fine. So um, nowhere that I've seen does it say you're going to sacrifice more than half of your speed to get a better signal. Again, I a thousand percent agree that it does an amazing job amplifying a weak signal. So if you're the person who's sitting boondocking somewhere and you desperately need enough Wi-Fi that you could do like 1990s AOL web pages and basic rudimentary email, then this will work amazing for that. If you're me and you were hoping that you could go to the RV park where the Wi-Fi signal seems like it's not great and you're gonna flip this thing on, it's gonna boost the Wi-Fi signal and you're gonna be able to do all the things you wanted to do, it's not gonna work. I found in four different parks in a row, I was better off speed-wise turning off this system and just connecting directly to the Wi-Fi at the campsite. I don't know if that's a negative. Maybe it's just me that I didn't read enough into it, but I didn't expect that. So in any case, if you're in the woods and you want a great signal to do AOL-style web pages, it works amazing. If you're somewhere in civilization and you thought you were going to get a better signal and more Wi-Fi connectivity and be able to do more, it's not going to work for that. Okay, I've mostly completely spoken all the way through the installation here. Part of it is by design, part of it's not, but what you need to know is it is super easy. It is completely contained, done, ready to go. All you need to do is find the spot on your roof, clean the area, drill a couple holes, screw it in, four screws, seal it up all real good, plug in the power cable, it's just a simple power cable, and that's it. All you do is you flip the switch and you are in business, and it is fabulous that way. As scary as it seems like the project might be, it is not hard at all, super easy to do. Don't worry about that aspect of it. Let me tell you about the part of the system which worked perfectly, and that is that 4G connection. Once I got the correct SIM card and plugged the SIM card in, it worked great. I had a nice strong signal. Frankly, for most things, I had given up on the Wi-Fi at the campsite or using this WineGuard system, and I had mostly just been using my cell phone as a hotspot. That was the quickest connection that I could get. But when I was making my Zoom calls and that kind of stuff, I definitely found that the WineGuard 4G was a much more stable and consistent connection, and I would give it five stars for that. That, that worked perfectly. It definitely goes through a lot of data if you're going to be doing those video calls. But um, that part of the thing worked seamlessly. I hope this review was helpful for you. Let's talk about some of the positives. 4G, it's a rock star for that. Installation is super easy and clear. Rock star for that. I, I think it's fair to say if you're looking for improving a weak Wi-Fi signal and you don't need a lot of speed, you just need 
desperately need to be able to send an email, it's a rock star for that. The one thing that it doesn't do, which I guess wrongly assumed that it would do, would be do a high speed Wi-Fi connection because it sucks up more than half the speed every time you connect to Wi-Fi. So this is not the device for a speedy connection. If you have any questions, please comment below. Let me know if you've had a different experience or any thoughts, because I still would really love to have that high-speed connection and haven't figured out a way to do it. I'm sure you've already hit that subscribe button with the notifications. That's right, Nikki's not around, so I get to say it. We'll see you on the road.